The problem with an error is that you don't know what the error signifies. And that's a huge problem. And that's part of what I want to delve into even in more depth today. And so this is like Ellis in, the, in Wonderland going down the rabbit hole. It's exactly the same thing. That's the whole, the rabbit hole is you made a mistake, right? You made a mistake. You've got your oversimplified representation of the world laid upon it. It validates itself in its execution if it executes properly. If it executes improperly, then what does that signify? And the answer isn't precisely that you've made a mistake. The answer is it signifies that there's something in the world that you excluded that shouldn't have been excluded. And that's a big problem because when you've laid out a simplified schema on the world, you've excluded virtually everything. And so what that means is that as soon as you make an error, the search space for the error immediately tends towards the infinite. And you experience that. You, it, it's, it's part of it, human existential experience. And the way you experience that is, especially if your mood is shaky, is you lay out a small plan, like maybe you go out for, for coffee with someone that you're romantically interested in, and they're, 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 not, uh, they're not pleasant to you. And, and so that's an error. It means, well, what does it mean? Well, you've construed yourself wrong, you've construed them wrong, you've construed the opposite sex wrong, you've construed human beings wrong, you're a walking catastrophe, and you might as well not even exist. It's like, well, that's, that's pretty extreme, but it's not that extreme, I'll tell you. Like, it's, it's, it's not that uncommon for people to have exactly that set of catastrophic responses to even a minor setback. Now, it's not good for them, and I would say, you know, just because you scraped your foot doesn't mean you should dig a grave and jump into it and pull all the dirt on, on top of you, you know. So, you don't want to start by taking yourself completely apart, but that doesn't mean people won't do it. They do it all the time. In fact, to me, it's always a mystery that they don't do it every single time. Because the logical inference for why didn't you get someone interested in you could easily be because you're a failure as a human being. And at some level, that's actually true. Now, it's, it's true in a way that's not that helpful, right? Because it's just too catastrophic. But it isn't obvious at all how people can defend themselves against that cascade of, of, of cata cat 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 catastrophizing. I mean, after all, if you were everything you could be, then maybe everyone would be attracted to you. I mean, perhaps not, but you, you get the point. And no, and no easy rationalization is going to let you just brush that away. Especially if you actually happen to be interested in the person, because that's even worse. Because then, not only are you rejected, but you're rejected by someone who's, who, upon whom you've projected an ideal, or perhaps on, from whom you've actually observed an ideal. So it's worse. You're, you're rejected by someone that you want to have be attracted to you, to validate your own miserable existence. It's not a trivial problem. <clears throat> so you're in this protected space that I, you know, I made an analogy between that and the Garden of Eden, or the city that Buddha was raised in. It's all protected and everything inside it is beautiful and functional. And that's by definition, because if your frame of reference is working properly, then what's within it is things you control that are functional and, 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 uh, and they're serving your purposes. So, when you're successful, you're in the Garden of Eden. That's one way of thinking about it. When, when the things that you're laying out in the world are delivering what they're supposed to deliver, that's what you inhabit. But the problem is, is that there's always a snake inside the garden. And it's, that's the story that's echoed in the story of Buddha. It's, in that case, it's Buddha's own curiosity that happens to be the snake, and you could actually say the same thing about human beings. Maybe it wasn't the snake, maybe it was Eve's curiosity. They're the same thing in some sense. And so it's Buddha's curiosity that drives him outside the city to find disease and death, and to blow apart his paradisal conceptualization of the world. And so, when we're looking at uni for universality, the first thing we might say is, well, you have a frame of reference that you've laid on the world. It's a story. You live inside a story. And the second thing we could say, and that's universally true, the content of the story can differ. That's okay. I don't care about that. It's the structural equivalence that I'm interested in. You live inside a story. And you have to because <clears throat> you have to live in something like that because you are goal directed and you have to be. And you have to simplify the world because there, you're just not enough of you to take into account everything at once. In fact, you can hardly take into account anything at once. So, you have to narrow things unbelievably. And by narrowing, 
and including only certain things, you exclude virtually everything else. So you're always in the problem, in the situation where you have this little bounded universe that you inhabit, but outside of it is chaos itself. And, <clears throat> and so that's the existential landscape. Order surrounded by chaos. Right? It's like a tree. It's like the, the, the evolutionary home of primates, the tree with the snakes on the ground. That's, that's our landscape. Or it's the fire for tribal people and the terrors of the forest that are beyond the that are beyond the the light that the fire casts it's explored territory versus unexplored territory and that's that's an archetype as well that that's you can't not be in a situation where that's the case even if you're among friends you know you think that's explored territory that's not exactly right because what happens if you're among friends is that they carefully reveal new parts of themselves all the time so it's like they're blasting little elements of unexplored territory, you, territory at you constantly. And if they don't, then what happens? You get bored, and you look for new people. And we know there's empirical data on that with regards to intimate relationships, because there was a nice study done a while back showing that looking at the ratio of, of positive to negative emotional experiences that were most predictive of long-term relationship success. And, the answer was, you now obviously it depends on how you would measure an event and how you would measure positive and negative emotion, but that aside, the finding was something like if you're in a relationship and you only have five positive interactions to one negative interaction, then the relationship will end, it's too negative. But if you have more than eleven positive interactions to one negative interaction, then it also ends. And you think, well that's pretty bloody peculiar, why in the world would that be? Don't you want like a hundred to one positive to negative interactions? And the answer to that is, what makes you think that you want a relationship so that you can be happy? Or at least happy moment to moment? Why do you think that? It's, not, it's certainly not the case, it's, you know that too, because you, I, I, mean, I bet you there's not a person in this room who hasn't rejected someone because they were too nice to them. Something like that, person's no challenge, it's something like that. You want someone who you know, you can get along with them, but now and then they bite you and you think, oh, that's, that's interesting, you know, I didn't really expect that, and then you go and puzzle over it for a while, and you torture yourself about it, and that's one of the things that keeps you really linked into the relationship, and the reason for that is that part of the reason that you want the relationship isn't so that you're happy right now, it's so that you can live a high quality life across multiple decades, and so you're looking for someone that you have to contend with, who's going to push you beyond what you already are, and who's going to judge you harshly often for your limitations. Now that'll make you angry and all of that, you'll, you know, and, and resentful, and maybe you'll take your revenge and, and, and all of that, but you don't want someone who thinks you're perfect in your current form, partly because why would you want to go out with someone that deluded? So, okay. So you've got this interpretive schema laid out on the world and it excludes the entire world and because it excludes the world the world tends to manifest itself inside that protected space on a, in an uncontrollable manner and that can take you down and it takes you down the rabbit hole and down the rabbit hole is where everything is because when you make an error what that is is the manifestation of the excluded world and the problem with that is that's too much, right? Because if you step out of the lifeboat into the ocean, then you drown. And that's, that's not any good. You can't drown every time something manifests itself that you didn't expect. There has to be a mechanism for orienting you in the face of error. All right, so what exactly does that imply? The question is, what do you discover when you go down the rabbit hole? I was thinking about that a lot today. I showed you that diagram that I thought was like a map of the phenomenological world. The, the lowest resolution category is something like the dragon of chaos. And so you might say, well what do you discover when you make an error? And the answer is, first it's a brief manifestation of the dragon of chaos. And that's no more to say than when you encounter the incursion of unexplored territory into explored territory, the circuitry you use is the same circuits that we use 
to, to respond instantaneously to the presence of predatory forces.